Although the checks on bolts and welds follow established rules that are essentially well-defined and standardized, the checks on the components are much more complex. This is because the resistance mechanisms that arise in a component depend on its form, on its dimensions, and on how it is connected to the other components. Other checks, bearing stress, punching, member net sections, etc., can be formalized to a certain extent. Others are so complex and general that a full finite element model of the component is useful for stress analysis purposes. This approach is not mentioned in the standards because a T-stub model is usually recommended instead, despite its clear defects and failings. Firstly, it lacks generality. Bolts must be regularly arranged in two rows, etc. Secondly, the simplification involved, compared to actual practical problems, is drastic. Thirdly, it is unwieldy and computationally complex. The T-stub model approach involves a limit analysis using a slip line theory. The finite element method has advantages and disadvantages. One disadvantage is the computation time, although it can be reduced using sparse matrix solvers like CSEs, especially in elastic scenarios. Another disadvantage is the need to examine the stress analysis results in order to decide whether the entity is acceptable in engineering terms. Furthermore, the FEM model of the components is conventional, and to a certain extent, specifically for welded and bolted connections, it is still subject to ongoing research. Its greatest advantage is generality, which enables us to address any problem in an essentially precise manner, within the limits of a numeric approach. Although the models are conventional, both the bolts and the welds can be modeled to give good safety results. The stress maps are, therefore, a much more sophisticated and accurate tool than T-stub models, which refer to elementary stress scenarios and are geometrically not very general. In the checking approach that uses a finite element modeling, we need to remember that some potential failure modes are already considered by other checks, like bearing stress or block tearing. Unlike the approach envisaged by the standards, no load limit is calculated for comparison with the applied load. The applied load is applied to the entity, and we examine the resulting state of stress to judge if it is acceptable. In the T-stub checks under Eurocode 3 Part 1.8, the check involves applying somewhat simplified limit domains between the elementary components of stress. For example, if there is an axial force and a moment, then the limit axial force and the limit moment are evaluated, then a limit domain is defined by linearizing. On the other hand, the FEM checks apply the axial force and the bending moment of each combination at the same time, as well as any other stresses present, to determine the corresponding state of stress. The approaches are therefore completely different, even though they are doing the same thing from an engineering standpoint. Even if not explicitly provided for under the standards, the checking approach that uses a FEM model is more rigorous by definition and aims to achieve the same results.